Oh yes, time to make some cool new motion graphics for my YouTube channel. Oh, for Creating your own good looking motion graphics in Fusion is really, really difficult because creating good looking motion graphics is sort of an art form in itself, something which I personally am not particularly good at. Now, fortunately, that's where people like Motion VFX come in. Motion VFX have actually been around for a while and they've been creating add ons and resource packs for Final Cut Pro. Now, what Motion VFX is doing is bringing those resource packs over to DaVinci Resolve, which is good news for us that want to be able to buy good looking packs rather than spending all the time trying to create them ourselves. Now, everything in these packs you could technically create yourself, you could do the work in Fusion. But what they've done is they're using their own artistic sort of flair to create really genuinely nice looking animations. Now, all the elements you're seeing in this video, everything you've seen so far and throughout the rest of this video, everything is from Motion VFX. So you can get an idea of the type of stuff that they're producing. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. They did email me asking if I wanted to try a couple of their packs and make a little review, but they're not paying me to create this video. So all opinions are entirely my own. They sent me two packs, but because I like to put my money where my mouth is, I also went on the website and bought a third pack as well, just so I could keep a real honest opinion because I've put my own money down on this as well. And if it was rubbish, I would tell you so. So which ones have I got? They sent me the M Tuba 2 pack, the M Intro 2 pack, and then I went out and purchased that M Clean pack. So let me talk you through each of those. The M Tuba 2 pack, which as the name suggests, is designed for YouTubers. There are 60 elements in total. We've got a bunch of subscribe buttons, titles, backgrounds, intros, icons, all that sort of fun stuff. All the things that generally you'd want to use if you're a YouTuber and you just want to be able to have some pop-ups coming on the screen as you're making the video. The M intro pack is designed specifically for those that are trying to create really, really fancy intros. Now it does have a few other things. You've got the intros themselves. There's some really nice backgrounds on there as well, which is really nice if you put in some gameplay or photo images, whatever, and you want a nice looking background in the background, but there's also a couple of titles in there as well. And then the last one is that M Clean Pack. Now this is a bit of a mix of everything. There's 59 designs or elements in there total. We've got intros, social media, titles, lower thirds, backgrounds, all that sort of cool stuff. Now this has got a slightly different aesthetic to the other two. It's a clean pack and it's got that real sort of popular clean geometric style look going on throughout. So they're the three packs that I've got. I've linked them all down in the description below. If you want to know more about each of the individual packs, I do recommend going on their website. The website's actually really good. There's a trailer for each one of the individual packs, as you'd expect. But also if you scroll down, you can hover your mouse over each of the elements and view every single animation on their own, just to make sure that it's exactly what you want before you purchase the pack. Now, if you want to get a rough idea of Motion VFX for yourself, there is a free one as well. It's called M Hello. You can download that. It's got a couple of examples so you can really get a feel for it. Now, Motion VFX have created these packs so that will work on either the free or the studio versions of DaVinci Resolve. However, quick warning, they will only work on the Windows or Mac versions of DaVinci Resolve. There isn't actually a version ready for Linux. Why, I hear you ask? Well, it's because of the way that they're installed. When you purchase a pack from Motion VFX, you don't download it directly from there. Instead, you install that M installer. You install that on your system and it's a small app which just sits in your system tray, runs, you can close it if you don't want it, but you open it up, you sign in, and then all of your purchases pull through from there. You then simply hit install. It'll do all the hard work, it'll install everything for you. You then then open up DaVinci Resolve and all the packs are there ready to go. Now I appreciate this isn't going to work for everyone. Not everyone's going to want this installed on their system, but I can see why they've done it. The main reason is so they can keep track of their licenses. They are selling a product at the end of the day. You get two licenses per download. So I've got it installed on my Windows PC and then I've also got the packs installed on my Mac laptop. It also makes it easy to install. Once you've installed the installer, you don't have to mess around trying to put files in the correct folders, that sort of thing. It does it all for you. There's also options within there to reinstall if you corrupt anything, uninstall it to remove a license, which you can then install somewhere else, all that sort of thing. Now, whether that bothers you or not is entirely up to you. For me, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It's sort of the way everything's going nowadays, so I'm not too fussed, but if it bothers you, then fair enough. So that's how to get them installed. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve now. I'll show you how to actually drop them on your timeline and some of the customization options. 
So here we are on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. Now I've got my effects library open, as you can see over here. And if we go to titles, you can see I've got a motion VFX folder. And if we expand that, I've got my channel clean, my intro to, and my MTubers to. Now I'm seeing the folders because I'm on DaVinci Resolve 17.4. If you're on an older version, you won't see them categorized like so. They'll all just be grouped together in one big list. So I'm gonna hop into my MTuber 2 because I think that one's gonna be a popular one. And then you can see we've got all of the individual assets within here. So we've got loads of stuff. We've got backgrounds, abstract gradients, squares. We've got end screens. We've also got some icons, some logo sort of intros, some more pointers social media, avatars, subscribe buttons, and then some titles at the bottom. So let's just grab one. Let's grab this MTuber subscribe sidebar. All of the preview, the scrub preview works as you'd expect, like so. And then if we just give it a click, drag it, we can put it onto our timeline like so. Now these will work on any frame rate and any resolution, and you can adjust the length as you need to, and they will change accordingly. Now, of course, these are fusion based assets, so they will take a little bit of time to render. I've got my render cache on, so it's just rendering as we speak. But if you're on a slower system, they will take longer. Quicker system, they will be a little bit quicker. So you just need to bear that in mind. It will depend on your own system. Now, if we just hit play, you can see we've got this really nicely animated subscribe button, turn on the notifications and like with the little thumbs up and then off it goes. Now, if we want to change any of these elements, we just give it a click in the inspector video title. You can see you've got all of the options within here. Now, this is something that Motion VFX have done really, really well. Every single element has all of these options within the inspector. There's loads of options to change text, fonts, color. You can change line colors, background colors. There's also really nice ways of dropping logos and images within certain things as well. So top job with that. So let's have a quick look. First of all, we've got these ins and outs. So we can turn on or off the in and out animations. Then if we go to the content controls, we can change the position. So if I want this subscribe button to come over here and down over here, and we wanna make it a bit smaller, we can do. In the text one controls, we've got subscribe. Let's just change that to be Mr. Alex Tech. And then we can change the font, we can change the color, we can change the sizing. We've then got text two, which is our turn on the notifications. And then our text three is and like. We've then got element controls. So we've got the button color, the icon color, which is the actual YouTube icon. We've then got the like color. So it starts off red and then turns blue. But if we wanted it to turn green instead, it can do. So you can just change everything within here. We've then got the background controls. So we've got this white background, but again, if we wanted it to be a different color, we can do. Now, the other great thing with these, because they're titles, we can drop them into a power bin. If I just remove this off my timeline, grab it out of my power bin and drop it on. It's got all of my changes saved. We've got the blue background. So in any future projects, we don't need to change the text later on because they're titles in a power bin, drop it onto the timeline, job done. Now, sticking with how easy they are to use, let me show you another quick example. I'm gonna scroll up. This time, I'm gonna grab one of these ending videos. So this is like an end screen, again, for my YouTube, and you can see it's got this drop zone. So still within the inspector, under title, we've now got this drop zone controls. We're gonna expand that, and we've got a drop zone file. If I click on browse, it asks me to pick up an image. So I'm just gonna grab one of my thumbnails, and it's gonna drop that image into the drop zone. So now if we have a look at the animation, it's gonna ping in from the side with a nicely animated little thumbnail, watch more, new content, job done. Once again, we can drop that into a power bin and it will remember that image, providing it doesn't actually move from that location on your PC. And you'll just be able to drop it from your power bin directly onto your timeline every time and job done. Now the exact same thing works for icons. So this time, let me hop into the intro two pack and we're gonna grab one of the intros. So let me just grab this one and we'll pop it onto our timeline like so. I'm gonna give it a click, inspector, title. There's a logo controls and we've got your logo and browse. So I'm gonna hit browse and then all you'd want to do is find your logo PNG. This little duck PNG, I just happen to have lying around and then if we trim through, we can have a look. The little ducky pops in and then is animated out and it looks really, really good. Again, once I've made that change, I can pop it into a power bin so that intro will always be there, 
always ready to go and I can just drop it onto my timeline. Now, the vast majority of the assets in these packs are titles and the benefit of titles, they're easy to amend and you can drop them into power bins. But there is a slight problem with just a few of them. Because they're titles, they don't actually affect anything underneath them like an effect would do. And that can cause a few little issues on some of the assets. So let me show you that. So this one here is this little sort of subscribe button animation as it zooms out, ticks the box and then zooms back in, which looks really, really cool. But if I just enable this and hit play, you can see rather than it resizing the screen within the sort of YouTube area, instead it crops it. Because it's a title, it's not affecting the content underneath. This is a perfect example where this being an effect and actually affecting the timeline underneath would probably work a little bit better. But admittedly, these are few and far between. I think there's only one within the MTuber pack, which is this one specifically, which would work better as an effect rather than a title. Now, I actually think Motion VFX are aware of this. The intro and the YouTuber packs are a little bit older and they use mostly titles. The latest pack, which is that clean one, actually does use effects more than titles. So I think they're aware of it and hopefully they'll implement those changes going forward to the MTuber and to the intro packs as well. So they're easy enough to install and they're easy enough to use and customize, but are they actually any good? Well, personally, Yes, I think they are. I think they're really genuinely nice resource or asset packs for DaVinci Resolve. Because there's not many of them either, these really stand out as being genuinely high quality, good looking animations, good looking effects packs. I think of the bunch, the intro one is my favorite. I like the MTuber one, but I don't do that many subscriber buttons and that sort of pop-ups. I don't necessarily feel the need for it. Some of the other things in there, like the little pings that you're seeing on screen now. The intros aren't bad and some of the other elements as well are quite nice, but I just really like some of the animations within the intro pack. I think the backgrounds are really, really good and all the intros look really, really awesome. I wouldn't necessarily use them that often for intro screens because you don't need that many, but they will make really nice title screens, chapter screens, sort of little bits if you're trying to put some information on screen, you can use them as backgrounds. There's lots of uses for the animations and for the effects within the intro pack that I really, really like. The clean pack is cool as well. I like the style of it, but it doesn't really suit me very much. So I probably wouldn't use it quite as much as some of the others. But I'm gonna throw up on screen now some of my favorites from the intro pack specifically. And of course, you can see all of these on the website themselves, which is why I'm not showing you every single element because you can view them all on the website. But I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. And as you can see, well, at least in my opinion, I think they look like really nice, well thought out, fluid, dynamic looking animations. They've got a sort of a weight to them, nicely accelerated. It looks like someone's genuinely put a fair bit of effort and a fair bit of care into making these animations look really, really good. But are they worth the cost? Because they're not the cheapest things in the world. The M Tuber and the M Intro packs are $99 each, while the clean one is a little bit cheaper. I think that's $89. In the UK, that works out to be about 70 of your fine British pounds. So they're quite expensive. Now, I'm certainly not going to stand here and tell you whether you should buy these or not, because that's entirely up to you. I think they are definitely some of the best looking resource packs that I've seen, especially for the Rincher Resolve. However, how much you're going to use them is really going to determine whether they have the value for money for you. I make lots of videos and having these available within my effects library to just drop on my timeline is really, really valuable to me. It will save me loads of time. This video would have taken literally hours longer if I'd have had to create all of the visual effects which you've seen throughout this video myself. Literally, it probably would have taken me a couple of days longer to create all of these things. Many of them, actually, I wouldn't have been able to create because I don't have the talent or the artistry to design some of these motion effects. But whether that applies to you is a totally different story. I make money from my YouTube, so having these elements kind of makes sense. If you're just doing it for fun, Maybe not, maybe you could get away with a slightly more basic subscribe button, for example, if that's what you're after, but that's entirely up to you. This is just my opinion, you can take it or you can leave it. So that's it, that's Motion VFX. And I believe they are looking to move more of their Final Cut assets over to DaVinci Resolve, so we should see loads more asset packs in the future. If you do wanna have a look, there are some affiliate links down in the description below, so give those a click. Thanks for watching, take it easy, subscribe, 
Yeah? I'll see you next time. See ya. Oh, yes, right. Time.